After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Another night in the streets, another night in this hell. I've been kicking the trick and the cops is me in jail. And my fingers in ink, they got my head on the lights. Dear Lord, please get me out this jail tonight. Just get me out. Just get me out. I've been a correction officer for 13 years. Primarily, it's been booking for almost 10 years. We get everything, the murderers, the rapists, the child molesters, we do get it all. Every day is a different story, every day is a different adventure. You know, you come in, you don't know what's gonna happen. When you think you've just seen it all, something else goes off. There's an incident in the dorm, so every officer available is going to respond. K-9 is going to respond, and we'll see how, when we get there, how big of a fight it might be. Make sure this door is closed. Make sure it's closed. Pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's go. On your bags. Let's go. Let's go. Break it up. Shoot him. Shoot him. Get up. Get on your back. Face down. Face down. Face down. Face down. Face down. Everybody else, get on your back. Face down. Face the opposite way to the rear wall. Everybody face to the rear wall. Now! All right, let's go. Open it up. Yeah, they were going out. They were going out. No one should be looking back here. Nobody. No move. Nobody move. Face down. Take that head off. Face down. Lay on your belly. All right. OK. That's it. That's it on the, the fighters? That's it. They were growing at it right there, so. They were going at it right there, so. Hey, I was with the transfer in the box. He got shot. You feeling pain anywhere? That's it? See a uh, less lethal pepper ball launcher. What's that? Baby powder or something yeah, in there? It's just like talcum powder. Paintball gun? I take the bolt of metal and blame them. Get mine, Bolton. Grab mine. Okay, and my scissor. Come here. Face the wall over there. Pound the two one. Put him in there. All right, he's gonna be housed in here till the sergeant does his investigation, finds out why exactly they were fighting. All right. We'll bring you uh, your clothes and uh, shoes, all right? What size are those? Eight. Well, we're going to try to keep everybody separate for now. Step in. All right, that's what typically happens every time. There's a fight in the institution. They're separated. An investigation is done as to why they were fighting. They were either one or both to be charged with fighting, depending. They find out who's the aggressor or whatever reason. It's up to the sergeants and classification what they're going to do with them after this point. All right, listen up. You're uh, charged with fighting with another person, also charged with refusing an order. How do you plead? Not guilty. Well, what were you doing? I was playing chess. You were playing chess, and? And, uh... I don't know the other guy's name. I, I know him by Muslim. He was banging cards on the table. And I, kept, and I asked him repeatedly. I said, excuse me, man. You know, every time you bang on the table, the chess pieces fly up, and we're playing on this table, too. So he's like, oh, I don't care. You know, you can go to another table. The table, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's for everybody to enjoy. You know what I'm saying? So I said, please, man, stop banging on Who the table. Who threw the first punch? He threw the first No, he put, he, his, did? he put his hands on me. Oh, yeah? And that's when I pushed him off me. And we started fighting. Okay. They're refusing an order. The officers weren't telling you to stop fighting? 
They want to yell, you didn't, you didn't hear? Sarge, I was involved in a fight. Yes. I'm not listening to the, I, I'm not even hearing the, no. I'm you not, heard when, when they shot you with the gun, though. I, that you, that yeah, you felt, right? Felt you that. stopped right away, didn't yes, you? Sir. Oh, okay. So right now you'll be placed in SDU until, we, until you hear it. SDU? Until you hear it, yeah. Okay? Good boy. It was crazy how it went down. You know what I mean? There's two whole tables, unoccupied, you know what I mean? We're there first. They choose to sit in the back of us to play, you know, to uh, play chess. But yet they want to complain about us slam. Come on, you know how it is when you play spades, man. You know what I mean? We all amped up. So then he comes and just like straight what they call D-blocking the whole game. If I can't play chess, nobody ain't playing. So I'm like, look at this guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, you're not playing chess, man. I just sat back. But then when I thought it was over, when he moved, and I went to resume the game, you know what I mean? He came and just pushed me out the way. You know, once you throw the first blow, man, now it's fighting stat. All right, it's going to be investigated now, and then you'll go in front of the hearing board and they'll make the final decision. All right, you can put him back. Control over. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fernando! He's gonna lock him in and pull the other one out. When you're in this type of environment with people with different issues, anything can go off and anything can change your day. So if they plead not guilty to fighting, they'll set up for a hearing. One will go back to the same dorm and the other one will go to another dorm. That's how a fight goes. Oh, okay. I'm Deputy Frank Rapsat with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. What we have to deal with is substance abuse and alcohol. Yeah, it's a big major thing down in Florida. Suspects that come in, it's a big issue that we show the respect no matter what condition they're in, whether they're drunk, on drugs, we still have to show the respect to them as well as we want the respect back. All right. <laughs> you know what? Hey, uh, hey, hey. Come on, smart mouth. Abuse, 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 abuse. The cops right abuse it, people. Gonna... See him? Ma'am, I, okay. I did nothing wrong. Don't I did hand. nothing wrong. You, you are to not going to talk disrespect me like that, okay? You will not disrespect me. I didn't disrespect anybody. My mother Put knows judges in New Shut York. It doesn't matter, ma'am. You're, you're hurting not my arm. Quit trying to grab mine. You're hurting my arm. I didn't do anything wrong. Stop yelling. Call my lawyer. No, I don't call people's lawyers. My mother is a judge in New York. Ma'am, I'm from New York, so you're being stupid right now. I'm in New York as well, okay? Nice mouth. You kiss your mom with that uh, mouth? I, I was never read my right. Well, you definitely have the right to remain silent. At any given time you want, you have the right to it. And we'd appreciate it if you go and do that. with me, man. That's a shame to claim that you're a New Yorker. And what did I do? Just comply with the orders, okay? You don't put your hands on me Keep your hand up here and don't move like I just told you. I might touch a beating right now. Stand right there. You want to strip my clothes? Strip my Clothes. I've got some clothes, thanks. Appreciate it. Please. Sit in. Obnoxious young lady. I want to apologize, everybody. Not everybody from New York's like that. So now she's being really obnoxious and she's being rude and disrespectful to, to the law enforcement. So she's going to have to stay in there until we get her charged in and hopefully she'll calm down after that. So. Officer Knuckles, uh, can you explain to us why she was brought in here? Yeah, she was very disorderly. She was trespassed from the casino. She was told to leave. We dealt with her in a real nice manner. She got very irate with us, started yelling at officers on the scene. Was she walking out staggering, or was she just yelling? No, she actually refused to pay a cab driver and pay the cab driver at a later point in time. But then she uh, caused a disturbance screaming and yelling inside the uh, casino. We're just going to relocate this lady from the home cell she's in with a couple other female inmates over to this one because she's a little bit loud and combative, disruptive. We got I've been violated. The cops have beat me. Oh, yeah, they have beat me. This officer. Here you go. Here you go. Have a seat. Here you go. I want a lawyer. You'll get one. Just.
not right away. She'll stay over here by herself. Hopefully she'll settle down, cooperate with the booking process, come out in a little while. But she's going to be in there for probably half hour or so at least until she calms down and cooperates with the procedures. Hopefully over here by herself, a little more out of view. She won't be taking her clothes off, exposing herself to the male, male inmates out there, creating a disturbance. Hopefully we won't have to worry about that again. The sooner you behave, the sooner you get out of this cell. Do you understand me, Linda? Until you calm down, you cannot come out of here. She just doesn't get it. She wasn't following instruction or listening to what she's being told. She's going to be banging on the glass. She was very animated all over the cell, acting very erratic. All right, what's your name? I can't hear you. No, what's your name? No, what's your name? That part has nothing to do with me. You have to show us that you're not going to act all crazy and expose yourself. If we understand each other, then you need to have a seat and settle down and you show me that you can behave and then we'll let you out. Excellent. She seems to indicate that she understood what Corporal Bryan was saying, but whether or not she'll do it, I don't know. So uh, we'll give her a few minutes and see what happens. Linda has calmed down quite a bit. I can see her back there. So what I'm going to do is walk her through the process because she disrobed earlier, and if she goes through that, that same type of scenario again, that could obviously cause us a large problem in the open booking area. All right. I want to go home. Yeah, but it doesn't work that way, Linda. I'm trying to help you out so you can go home, but right, you got to follow the process. Yeah, okay, wait till you do that bond stuff and fingerprint picture do that when, when they call you out. Uh, okay. Linda and I were getting along famously, and I was able to explain to her the bonding procedure, the fingerprinting, and the photograph, and uh, she should be out within the next two hours. When I came to the county, I came for a job change and a career change, and I absolutely love this job. There's nothing about this job that I don't like. It's different than any other job I've ever had in the sense that um, it's not something that people normally do, and it changes you as a person. Have you been in the hospital in the last 24 hours? Yes, sir. Are you suicidal? Negative, sir. Uh, I was. What did you get arrested for? Currently, I slammed my head in a patrol car. Okay. I don't know why. Got a little drink tonight? Yes, sir. I, uh... You're born in the U.S., right? Yes, sir. It's most not, Nothing sharp when you got any piercings I can't see? Negative. If yeah. I did, you'd most certainly find okay. them. I'm going to release your left hand. When I do, just lean forward and put your hand on the counter, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Put your hands there. It's kind of tight, so I'm going to have to push on a little bit. I understand. Okay. All right, hand flat. Big go. Pick up your shoes, set them on the counter. You can take your hands down to do that. What else are you on? No, it was just going to be a detox thing. Oh. And got all jacked up and worked up about that. Uh, criminal mischief. So he was out doing something he shouldn't have been doing. There's a profile of white male adults between the ages of 25 and 35 under the influence of alcohol are most likely to commit suicide in jail. He falls right into that criteria, especially as upset as he was. Right put these back on. He uh, headbutted the patrol car apparently and split his nose up in there. This is the property that we took off here, all right? You're gonna just hurt go ahead and sign there. No, sir. I just. That's ma'am, actually. Oh, I apologize. That's all right. Go ahead and sign your name right here for your property. You're going to be here for about four or five hours before you get to go home tonight, all right? Okay. I'm going to get you sobered up. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to get you out of here, all right? Okay. All right. okay. This shows here, see your right hand. Yeah, he is. See your right hand. Apologize. Just go like that. You must Just go like that. Why don't you get a clean one and wipe, wipe off your face? There you go. I really broke my face open. Well, that's too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. Why don't you go and have a seat over here? Yeah, go ahead and have a seat right over there. 
Alright. You're not putting us through anything. We're here for eight hours. Sorry. Don't apologize. I understand that you're upset. But tomorrow you'll be over it. You'll have a hangover, but you'll be over it. The weather hasn't been that nice, and then now all of a sudden the weather's nice. People kind of go a little bit crazier than normal. Everybody goes out and drinks, hits the bars. A lot of them end up here. So what did you get arrested for? Possession. What is it? Possession. Meth? How long have you been doing meth? Off and on for quite a while. You don't look like a typical meth user. Open your mouth, lift your tongue. All right. Carry any needles on you? No. David, how long have you been doing that? A few years. A few years? Were you working? No. Were you working before you started using that? Yes. What were you doing? Um, I did office work, computer stuff. Office work? How do you support yourself now? Uh, my parents. Your parents? Go from having a job, paying your bills, to doing a drug. That, that's all you want to do is go after the drug. You don't want to work? Just want to waste your life away with meth and eventually kill yourself. Lift your foot up, bend at the knee. How do I bend? When's the last time you used? It's been a few days. A few days? Yeah. How do you normally do it? Shoot. Shoot? Is it keeping you from working? Um, yes. Have you tried to get any help? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a drug treatment program? Change point, actually. Change point? OK. Is that something that you wanted to get into or the court ordered you into? I need to get into it. Okay. Your property. All right. First uh, four fingers on your right hand there. Straight down. Straight down. Straight up. Uh, we're gonna get some more fingerprints from you, so don't have to worry about getting all the ink off. Have a seat in the chairs. Seems like more and more methamphetamines has become a common thing. <laughs> It's uh, pretty much ruined his life. He had a good job where he's working with computers and all that's gone down the tubes. Okay. okay. Come on this way. How many times have you been in here? Quite a few. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull up the pictures from every time you came in here. And I want, to see the, want you to see the progress that meth has done to you, okay? So I'm going to do that while I'm going to show you those pictures and see if that gives you a little bit more incentive, okay? Look straight ahead. Okay, sir, head on down there. Have a seat with the men. I'm going to come find you here in a few minutes, all right? He came in on a possession of a controlled substance charge and... The controlled substance that is his drug of choice is methamphetamines. Gotta love methamphetamines, you know? It's Just gotta good. love them. He said he was going into a drug treatment program and he's going into it voluntarily. When I meet someone like that, I want to go through, get the pictures of the times that he's been incarcerated and show him the difference between before he started using drugs and now. And hopefully it'll have a lasting effect on him that when he does go into drug treatment, he can refer to those pictures to give him a little bit more incentive. I want to show you something. All right. Remember him? What was this? Yep. That's before you started using. This right here is less than a year later. This one's horrible. How much weight do you think you lost between those two times? I don't know. There's no way you were 135 pounds at that time. Five men to 41. This is 1999. Before and after, pretty amazing, isn't it? And that's today. So look at the difference. Normal kid right there. You seem like you have a pretty level head on your shoulders, and you're at that point where you want to end the cycle. And I, I, I really hope that you succeed. I really do.
came into this country in 1986 from the Netherlands, with English being my second language. I decided I wanted a career with law enforcement. I became a citizen and tested to become a commission officer. Uh, for the last five years now, I've been a supervisor in booking, where it's very dynamic, and I love every minute of it. Uh, we have a code five that arrived, uh, which means that he's either fighting or just not cooperating with the process, so I'm going to talk to him, see what we have. He looks all right. Hi, guys, what we got? So uh, this gentleman, uh, we got pulled over, flagged down by a citizen, saying that uh, he was drinking, or he was driving all crazy, going in out of lanes. So we pulled him over, had him step out of the vehicle, reeks of alcohol. He's stumbling a little bit. Doesn't Sorry, want to yeah. do any of Doesn't want to do anything. Now he's saying he's not going to do it or blood draw or anything yeah. like that. So. so he's DUI? DUI, yeah. yeah, he failed the test. Okay. Yeah. How are you, sir? Are you going to talk to me, sir? I want to talk to a supervisor. I am a supervisor. See? I got stripes right there. I did not fail the field sobriety test. Okay. Okay? Oh. Maybe my mouth got me here, and I understand that. Okay. I did not fail the field sobriety test. Okay. You are here now. I can't change that. So listen to the officers. I, I mean no harm. Okay. I mean no problem to no one. Okay, he's going to walk in. He's just very... He's upset. I'm obviously. upset. Yes, sir. Yes. No. All right, listen to the officers, okay? They're going to unhook you and everything. Okay. Thank you, sir. I want a legitimate test. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll do a test inside, all right? Hi, sir. Hi. We're going to see what we can do about getting you a legitimate test. I like nice people. That's what I am. I'm officer. Right through here, sir. I got to feel like a criminal. This is horrible. Gosh. The right and right here's right. Sit a while. You got anything left in your pocket? No, now? I don't. Anything know. sharp? Life's left in sharp. Not then. I don't. Your sergeant? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm wearing a watch. Uh -huh. That's okay. worth take more than most here. people's oh, we cars. We will take care of it very well, sir. Okay. I've had situations okay. where my stuff has been damaged yeah. or okay. disappeared. That's definitely a watch that I will remember. Well, it's it's going to go on your property, sir. It's going up right there. And you will sign for it, okay? But, but I, I want to know that you know. I know. I see. That I'm, he just I'm, threw my, my $30,000 watch in the bag. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't understand? Because you think the system is so beautiful that you think I'm going to get my watch looking like, like it is. Nobody I'm trying wants, to tell you that I've been here before. Sure. And I did not receive my my property. Okay, well, I'll make sure you sign for it. I got arrested for suspected DUI. I didn't get arrested for killing anybody. Blood draw. Sergeant. Yes, sir. May I say something? Is she done with you? Can I talk to the sergeant? Yes, I'm right here. She's right there. Look. Talk. Sergeant. Not yell. You need to, you need to, yes. You're right, you're right, you're right. I'm saying, sergeant, I have a 30 carat watch that you just took off. Yes, sir. And I'm afraid. I'm terrified that when I leave this place, I want to know that it's going to be there when I leave. What's the brand name so we have it on camera? What's Benny and Company. And it's 30 carats. Wow. And it's full of diamonds. That's impressive. Yeah. It's because, yeah, it is impressive because I own my own business. That's awesome. Okay? And I'm a sole proprietor. Officer McArthur. Sir, yes. sir, sir. Sir. Calm down. Sir, I'm you, not angry. You are angry, sir. No, he's belittling me. No, I'm not. Yes, he is. I simply sir. complimented your watch. Sir. Thank now you. relax. Sir, listen to me. I'm in the room that handles your property. When you come in with that, when you come in, as long as you cooperate with this process, you're going to see everything that we inventory. What about a seal forming part? What about a breathalyzer? Oh, my okay. God. I, I hate needles. Look this oh, way. Yeah, Will somebody this please, way. like, please, somebody. Don't break my fingers, no, 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 no. Listen to me. Don't break my fingers, though, okay? I don't like needles. Oh, come on. Don't break my I'm fingers. I'm not going to squeeze your fingers. Don't break my fingers. Here, squeeze this pad. Oh, right Look right here. Look this way. Look the other way. Look the other way. Look the other way, man. Come on. Oh, here, 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 here. Please, please. Relax, man. Easy. Look the other way. Oh. Time. 21. Easy, easy. Just relax. You got it. Almost done. All those tattoos you got? Come on. I know. That's what, that's what my best friend told me. He's like, you. This is easy compared sorry, to those. Son of a gun. He's like, he's like, you can't even take a a, a blood test, and you got all those tats. I'm like, uh. what will be done? The tats take hours. Hey, it's good to know you don't want needles, because obviously I you're not a, an not addict, then, right? Huh? By the way, I love you guys, and I'm Thank sorry. You. I'm sorry for tonight, but you know what? I'm confident it's good for you, of sir. this test. All right. you're, you're doing good. Lose sharp. So ah. Lose sharp. Ah. Good job, good job.
Thank you. Thank you. Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Nimi. That was. We appreciate your cooperation, sir. First secret. All right, set up. Sergeant, please. I'm gonna come with you. We're gonna come to. Please. Come on, let's go walk. Let's walk. I'm coming. I'm talk. Yeah, walk and talk. I'm gonna go. Multitask. Sergeant, walk and talk. Walk and talk. We're gonna go over here, and then you're gonna have a. See all your property then, and sign for all your stuff that you came in with. Okay. So, so I haven't been booked yet. Yeah, you're booked. We're just doing the book. We're just doing your property process oh, right oh, now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Listen, this is an inventory of your clothing, including okay. your shoes. This is the watch that you were worried about. See, it's totally intact. Yeah. Okay. That's about thirty thousand right there. Okay. okay. Well, I'm I'm not a jeweler, so I can yeah. only go by what you tell yeah. me. Okay. Okay. There's your watch. There's your other little bracelet you yeah. had. All right. Yeah. And then you had um, some. Free, free drink, drink cards. cards. That might have what got you in trouble. No, no you didn't have those free drinks this, yet. Okay. It. Then you're shirt and your pants. Okay, shoes. Don't write on it. You can't write okay, on well, it. Just okay. read it and then sign it. So everyone has a problem with me like checking stuff off, right? No. Because I'm a, I'm want, a piece sir. of you know what, and I'm a criminal. Sir, did we call you a well, piece then, of you know why, what? Why Come, on. Like, Come on. Come on. You are still okay, agitated. Sorry. And at the wrong people, okay? I need you just to sign your stuff, and then we can go on with the process. You see how I signed when I didn't want to? This is your copy. Hold on to that. It has personal information on it about you. You don't want to leave that laying around. Come with me. They're going to call you for fingerprinting, pretrial, and all that stuff. Wow. All right? Thank you. Okay? Take a seat. First three rows on the left. Okay. Thank you. He seems to think that we were going to lose his, uh, I believe he called it 30 carat watch. At one point, he said it was 30,000, changed it to 30 carat. And he was worried about his Louis Vuitton shoes. But as you can see, we went through the booking process now, and he signed for all his stuff, and all of his property was there. So hopefully, he'll be leaving soon. Sergeant in the Clark County Detention Center, currently assigned to the Central Booking Bureau. I moved here in 78 from an area north of Boston. In the mid-80s, we had the rise of the mega hotels, which brought with it a rise, huge rise in population, a rise in crime in the city, and that was one of the major drives that made me decide to choose this career. What do we have here? We have a young lady who basically beat up her mother. She was 78 years old. Wow. Mom has obvious signs of battery on her. She was being reported as a drunk driver. And then all of a sudden, uh, at one point, tried to burn the arresting officer with a cigarette. Uh -huh. She's very okay. bad up. You know, I had to put a spit mask on her because she was spitting on uh, officers. Right. But we're going to have to get blood from her also. I'm sure that will complicate the issue. Hey, Mimi. I'm Sergeant Schlossberg. I am not in your custody. You're okay, in any so mother. Have, been, uh, have you been uh, drinking a little no, bit today, bitch. Mimi? No, bitch. I didn't drink some mother. Drug. You know it. No, I'm not a drug addict like you are. Did you get, get in a fight? Did you get a fight in before no. you came in here? You're done. Get away from me, bitch. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, obviously, as we can see, she is completely incoherent. Sergeant incoherent. Be careful, please. Watch yourself. Don't. 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 Is she bumping? Is she bumping? Right you need to have to come out of the car. She's got her other leg locked. Watch that other leg. Let the police officers do it. Not you. Not the women. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. This way. I'm going to kill you for alcohol, cigarettes, money. I'm going to kill you when I get free or hit you with food. You need to calm down. No. You're not going anywhere, so just relax. We need a death. What's okay. does? I'll kill you. You get away from me, you crazy son. I mean, I gotta... Do it. I'll kill you. Put another one on. Good. I'll bite your noses and your faces and your okay, fingers good. and your hands. Get right. the I away from me. Immediately. Hit me. Yes. Hit me. Kill you and bite you to death and eat you food. Hit me, because as soon as you do, you'll diminish into fire, ashes, and water. Can you just calm down? No! A little bit? Well, I don't want to talk to you. All right, we're going to have to get blood from you, okay? Take I... all the blood you want. Just do me a favor. Get out of my face, ugly son of a bitch. 
Officer Roth, how did we end up in this situation? I was put on the call as a drunk driver. The subject was inside the vehicle, drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. I asked her to get out a couple times uh, nicely. She wouldn't respond to me, so I uh, tried to get out of the car. She started to fight with me, took her cigarette and burnt me in the hand several times. And then uh, we placed her into custody and uh, we uh, brought her down. Mimi is so out of control that she is a danger to herself and we want to make sure that she's secure, that she doesn't hurt herself. So we'll take her to this holding area until she calms down and we can assess the situation and have a psychologist assess it as well. Hey. Clear. Okay, everybody. We're gonna keep Mimi in the restraint chair for her own safety. When she finally gets it together, we will attempt to take her out of the restraint chair and move forward from there. I've got code five female, uh, no information at this point. I'll get a briefing from the patrol officer and then uh, we'll go from there. Any first aid? Nothing. She okay. is basically drunk and uh, she's just, um, and apparently female here was uh, very drunk, uh, yelling at customers. I couldn't identify her, I couldn't really, really write her a citation, so brought her uh, in. We have a name of Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. How you doing? I'm okay. All right. I'm cool, but I didn't do nothing, you know that, right? I want to know my charge. Okay. I'm going to give you one shot to walk in. Okay, uh, we'll give it a shot. Get your shoes. Sure, shoes are still in the car. Where were you arrested? Outside, just, just sitting there doing nothing. First name Lisa. Mm -hmm. Spread your feet for me. You didn't even tell me my charge. No, you think you're funny? Lisa, have you just been drinking? I didn't do nothing. I didn't even take a drink. He's a liar. You just told me you were. Here. No, but he he never seen me take a drink. Okay. Have you? Did you? Have you taken any? Did you medication? see me take a drink? Hey, that's not the arresting officer. Lisa. Oh, Lisa, please. <laughs> You're yelling at the wrong person, Lisa. <laughs> okay, come on with me. Let's go. Come on. Lisa, I'm starting to get this. Lisa, Lisa hang on, hang on. stop. Walk with me, Lisa. Lisa, look. Focus on me. We're doing okay, all right? Okay. You're gonna make it. You're doing all right. When? Lisa, Lisa, stop. Come on, you're doing really good, Lisa. Come you're on. doing good. We're, we're almost gonna there. Have, actually, we're going to have one of our psych services come talk to you. Lisa, sit down. OK, come on. Good job. All right, good take job, a nap, Lisa. Lisa. Relax for me and take a seat. Oh, Just rest. Ladies, I want this place cleaned up before you leave, too. You never know what they're going to be like when they walk in. So you guys talked it out really good, and I appreciate that. I think she's going to take a nap now. Heading up to 2C now to check on Mimi. It's been several hours since we brought her up there. Maybe we can get her moving through the process. Hi, Mimi. Well, it is certainly much better to see you moving along now. There was some insinuation that you might have had a little physical altercation with mom. You know, I'm done with her. I'm done with her. I'm not, yeah. She can have it all. That's it. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thanks. Keep, keep, stay focused forward, all right? All right. Okay, we'll see you. Quite a few hours. What can change in a person over several hours uh, with some good counseling? She might be able to find her way out of this mess she's gotten herself into. female uh, we really have no information yet so we're gonna go out here and make contact and uh, see what we got okay do you have the uh, perpetrator's name comes back as Maria we have a spitter all right okay Maria no, my name is not Maria I'm sorry what is your name then? my name is Antonia Antonia I just got off work and five males attacked me attacked you. where did the spitting come in at though? where does the part where I get Assaulted by five. Oh, excuse my language. Wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. We're not having any of that. And this idiot 
puts me in handcuffs. Okay. Antonia? Yeah. Let's get you through this, okay? I don't want to be here. I understand that. I have that. two disabled kids. I understand that. So that's yes. why so it's important to you if, and your kids that you're good. Okay, I'm going to give you I'm going to give yeah. you a chance, all right? You got my okay, word. Okay, all right. Are you going to be you? I'm going to be right here with okay. you, Sergeant Sitzik, the okay. two of us, all right? Come help me. Antonio. All right, Antonio. Antonio, I need to sit you right here because I need to take your shoes off. Okay, so right here, all right. Right here, right here. That's fine. I was attacked in the hall in the elevator at Dre's by five guys. That sounds pretty terrifying to me. What, what were you doing in Dre's at the time? A new dance enough. club that yes, just sir. opened. Because I just ha I have Larry two Flint. disabled kids and I have no money. All right. So I have to go be a stripper to feed my kids. Okay. Well, we're gonna walk inside. Not racist. Well, we were on a previous call at Bill's Casino. She came out of the elevator, approached security, and just started yelling and making racial slurs. As I walked up to her, she kicked me in the crotch, spit on myself and two uh, security officers. Which, of course, in the state of Nevada is a felony. Yeah, make sure you take record of this. She had prescriptions on her that didn't belong to her, which is also a felony. Yeah, she really escalated that. Wow, what a foul mouth on her. No, I got attacked did, did by you, five you, Negroes. You don't have to over talk me, okay? Did I'm not ta over talking to you. I'm ta over talking to that Sorry. idiot. Were you treated by yeah, paramedics? Yeah, I was put in hand I was put in handcuffs. Were you treated by paramedics no. by the fire department? No. And you were not seen it in no. the ER? Yeah, I, I had medically it. medically cleared. Clear. Okay. Thank you. Have a seat. This is not fair. Just sit down and relax, okay? The main thing is, you can make some phone calls if you need to. I can't make any and phone calls. I don't really have anybody. My father's right, dead. Okay. He died and killed himself. My mother's a piece of I don't have anybody. Sergeant Zizek, let's talk for a minute. Okay. Let's talk for a minute. Stay, stay Officer Brackman, would you stay in there with her right I need now? Everybody. I'm not feeling real secure about her alone in this room right now. This is not, this is not good. She's too agitated. I'm not racist at all, but they attacked me and they punched me in my head. Well, we'll get Rachel's second assessment. Then. I have two disabled kids, and here I am sitting in jail. You were arrested. There were definite. Antonia, Antonia, you're Antonio, you're listen, no, it you're said that jail. I'm a girl. My name's oh, Antonia. And we brought you back here because you let it be known to us that you didn't want to be around other people. Yeah. Okay, so yes. this is why we are leaving yes, you here. Yeah. You're not going to hurt yourself. No, you're going to be fine. Okay, yes, we are going to exit the room yes, now. Let's go, guys. I would like to know what I'm being arrested. And you are going to find out. You will find out shortly. Who are you talking to? Antonia, let her know her charges, and uh, let's see what condition she's in at this point, and then we'll take it from there. All right. Go ahead and have a seat, Antonia. All right. Have a seat. All right. As promised, I found out what you're charged with, right? Yes, ma'am. So I'm letting you know right now that the officer gave you a huge break. Because you could have been charged with three felonies of spitting, but the thing is, he's not charging you with that. What you're being charged with today is possession of dangerous drugs without your prescriptions. They have to stay in those prescription bottles. I try not to take so And many don't with mix, me you're work. not supposed to mix your pills. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, okay, no, at when work, you go out. Like, they want to make sure that it's prescribed and you're like. Right. So when you go out anywhere, you're supposed to take those bottles okay. with you. So you were given a very big break compared to what could have been. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to be. Listen, you're doing good and we appreciate that. So just continue on that path and uh, uh, you'll be out of here expeditiously. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. She's calmed down a lot. She has calmed down a lot. Yeah, I, I certainly feel better about the situation. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Brockamante. You're welcome.
I've been working in booking for a long time now. I've been uh, working in corrections for over eight years and been down here in booking for over seven years now. You know, I like booking. I like to see the different people and all the different things that come in and out and being able to deal with them and to deal with the different personalities. Okay. Have you been drinking tonight? No, man, listen. DK, badass guitarist from Chicago. If you're gonna come to jail and bring some tunes, it better be good. He brought in, had a guitar with him. He was stopped because he tried to steal beer from a gas station and then uh, started acting like a fool and obstructing officers and we found some weed in one of his socks and the needle in the other. <laughs> All right, you get the jacket off? Both of them. Sack, you, will you go grab us a shirt? No. Huh? You want to grab us a little shirt? Yes. I will. Take my coat. Ready? And your jacket. This ain't a jacket, it's a shirt. It's a jacket. It's a shirt. Looks like a jacket to me. It's a shirt. It looks like a jacket to me. Don't make a fist, sir. That's the last thing you All want right, to do is man. make a fist. All right, man, damn it. Stay here, stay here. Don't move. Why are you, ow! Oh. Hold still. All right, man. Go down there. I have the shirt. All right. Do you need help with that? What'd you get arrested for there? Uh, zero. Zero. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Stay facing forward. Stop. Do not turn. Now look at look at this guy. Yep. He just want to squeeze my. <laughs> Put your feet down. Put your feet down. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You sure? Yes. Yes. Yes, please, over. I'm hurting. Let's start over, okay? Okay, okay. Stay, okay. Stand up. Okay. All right. Ow. Uh, Come on, get up here. Okay. Hands back up on your head. Is that a little red shirt? Yeah, get him out of here. You got to come over and see medical. Sit down there. He just hasn't been listening since he got in here. He's been screaming and yelling at us, wanting to demand everything. And so we're not going to give him his exact way. We're going to have him go through the process just like everybody else does. Try to open your eyes. Let's get you out of these cuffs. Stand right here on this line. You're going to face this direction over here, OK? You gonna play us a little song? I wanna see what you got, man. I hear you're good. Very good. Where'd you learn? Myself. Taught yourself in Chicago? Juliet. Juliet, excellent. I want some, uh, my clothes back. I'll let you have your, you're gonna get all your clothes back eventually. Have a seat for just a second. I'll give you back the pants, okay? No, all my change that I had. We got all your change, man. We're gonna log it in your property. And let's see what you can do, man. Oh, you wanna hear this thing? Yeah, I want you to tune it up and rock it out, bud. Good job. Did you write that one? Oh, yeah. Did you ever play professionally at all? Yeah. Where at? All over the country. All the country? He's ready to sign. He's ready to sign. All right, here's the copy of why you're here today. They got you on possession of marijuana, possession of a hypo device, and an obstructing charge. OK? I don't know what the deal is with all those, but that's what they brought you in here for today, okay? And like you said, you are well, getting I tried to, to get the marijuana for the sergeant. 
I brought it here for the sergeant. Oh, okay. The sar sergeant didn't want it. You remember the rules out here, right? All right, have a seat back over here on the left-hand side. Did you enjoy the free jailhouse concert? We don't usually have that often. You know, we don't it get that. It was bad. It, you know, I, mean, I thought that it was going to be bad, but it ended up being. Did you calm it was in here? You know, and even the other room kind of calmed thought. down. Yeah. People, people like, are listening. People are listening. Maybe we could bring them in more often just to play every once in a while. the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department for nine years now. Six of those years I've been on the Special Emergency Response Team, our CERT team. Basically, we deal with the worst of the worst here. Cell extractions, uh, riots, any high-risk transports, any disturbances in the jail, we have to deal with it. Just got a call that we got two code fives coming out. One of them's sitting on the bench. One of them's in the car. They told us they were brothers, possibly combative, so we're gonna bring the chair out and try to deal with the situation. Walk in. Yeah, you're a bad boy. You got to help you, right? Yeah, he said he was going to say that. I got a seatbelt behind my arm. I'm being cool. I'm being corresponding. I'm being cool. Walk, walk. You walk in here and be quiet, right? You want me to just you up and go around me? No. I can do that. No, that's all right. I know my strength. Spread your feet. Spread your feet. This ain't right. I'll spread my feet, but be polite. You don't hit my head against that wall again. Keep moving around. You're going to go in the chair. Okay? Keep slamming and pull my arms out. You're going to piss me off in a minute. I'm going to turn to the halt. All right. He's not going to make it. I ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. All your family's going to be dead in the morning. I'll kill your children's heads off. I'm gonna cut your daughter's head off first, bitch. Uh, he said he was gonna comply and be cool, but he's not now, so now we're gonna put him in the chair. Some people don't feel pain. No. No, I feel sorry for them. I feel it, though. That's a good thing. I mean, they still have life in me. You can do whatever you want with me. You can break my arms. Here we go, we're gonna have to see I, I chair. built this now, mother yeah. yeah, I did. Sit down. All right. You know what? You can't hurt me, bitch. You ain't got the balls to hurt me. Now why? Because I'm a man. You're a bitch. You can't hurt a man. Spit mask. I got one. What a freaking shark. Get off me. I got it. We got one right here. Seven ready for the next one. I'm cool. You can't hurt me no more. All right. You can't hurt me, mother. And why? Because I'm made out of steel, bitch. That's right. I'm Iron Man. I'm a monster. Do you want to be a monster? I'm not a monster. I'm a really nice guy. I'm going to save the world. You got me handcuffed. You don't want me to save the world, do you? This is where we take everybody with him. They're on suicide watch, which is what he's on. Once he calms down, they'll let him out and they'll place him on suicide. I'm a psychologist. I do a microwave. All right, they'll keep checking on you periodically. All right, as soon as you calm down, they'll let you out of the chair. Oh, God. Nice. Yeah, man, I'm down. Yeah, you're still down. Yeah, I'm still a little upset. I ain't you. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. All right, so we put one of the brothers in. He, uh, he made some suicidal comments to the nurse. He's going to be placed up here until he cools down. Now we're going to go check on the other brother. They want to go to four. I go to eight. What are you doing, sir? Ocho, ocho, ocho. Send me your money. Send me your money. Send me your money. Who's the faker? Was it Jimmy and Tammy Baker? Send me your money. There you go. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's what I like. Saying. That's what I like. <laughs> Thank you. Send me your money. I got all the money. Okay. I don't want them. I don't want them. Legs, feet. We're good. You got all this. Hold on. Catch, catch. Oh, it's on, brother. Hey, it was no. It's on. You stand up. One, two, three, go. I got no control. You got all the control. There you go. 
to kill them all. Kill them all. Kill them all. Kill all these motherfuckers. Kill them all. Metallica. Metallica. Did you bring those two brothers in? Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened with that? Well, we uh, stopped them behind at a uh, fast food restaurant drinking packaged liquor. Oh really? They were intoxicated, and one of them had warrants. And we hit the one of the brothers up. And the other ones took it for the other brother, and they started getting physical with us, and started okay. making threats to, you know, end our lives, and uh, just got out of control out there. So we had to hook him up and bring him down here. We're gonna keep an eye on him, see if he calms down, but it doesn't look like it right now. So, thank you. Riders on the storm. Oh yeah. To the bottom. Oh yeah. Riders on the storm. You like the doors? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I want to get you out of this chair. That's my goal right now. Get you out of this chair, get you safe. We can go upstairs and maybe have a doctor come and talk to you, make sure everything's cool. Okay. It's been about years, huh? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't come to jail. And uh, I want you to follow all the directions given to you by the officers so we can get you out of this chair. You said earlier you've been drinking for about 24 hours, right? That's a long time. Are you worried about your brother at all or what's going to happen to him? Or He's out. Me. Lean no. forward. Lean forward. There we go. No. I, had, I had Mulholland Drive. I had the Royal Canyon. I had Universal Studios. I had Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard. There ain't nobody can take anything away from me. Uh, two brothers obviously partying a little too hard. Um, back to back code fives, so it kept us on our toes this morning. And uh, they're up here in isolation units, and uh, they'll get observed. And, probably be here for a little while. You see all types of crimes come through here, and on a graveyard shift, I definitely see more drug and alcohol related crimes, um, mostly domestic violences and DUIs that come through here. It tears families apart and all I can do is hope that people can get the help that they need and better themselves. Ma'am, why are you in here tonight? Marijuana. That's the only charge you came in with? <laughs> I guess I, what, what's the charge, sale? Okay, go ahead and take that jacket off for me, please. Put it right here. You guys want to keep our jacket to you? Not in here. You'll, you'll get it back when you leave. Slip into your shoes. This row right here, all the way down to the very last chair. All the way to the very last chair, ma'am. So what do you guys got going on? Wow. We're just uh, testing this marijuana. Yeah, she was uh, very cooperative with us, too. She told us uh, how much she sells it for. And she actually sells it by the quality of the marijuana. Mm -hmm. She doesn't sell it by, like, you know, packages one gram. She sells it by the quality. And she said she grew this herself. It's called the Kush. It smells uh, pineapple-y. So what are the charges she's going to be booked on? Just possession of controlled substance intent to sell. Oh. OK. That's a good one. Yeah, very good. Christine, what are you guys in here for? Uh, passing off a bad script, whatever that is. Passing off a bad what? Script. You talking about money-wise or prescription? Prescription, yeah. Oh, okay. And that's your husband, brother, what? That's my husband. Okay. So you guys were brought in together then for the same charge? Similar. Similar? You haven't been to this facility. Have you been to any facility before? First timer, huh? Come up here to the wall. Face the wall. Sorry. Spread your feet. Is this your idea tonight or was it his or what happened? This is all me. Why? Because he's out of a job and he's out of work and I owed money to somebody and they told me if I did this, I be clear with them. And you don't have a job either? No, ma'am. I stay, I quit my job when I became a stay-at-home mom. Remember what I told you about talking to him, OK? Yes, ma'am. All right. This row, all the way down the very last chair. She seems to be pretty upset, pretty scared about the whole routine. Yeah. All right, Christine. What kind of prescription drugs were you trying to obtain? I don't know. Honestly, I saw the, you saw I saw prescription? the word. I saw the word. It started with an R. So it wasn't yours that you, you made? No, ma'am. Um, other thing that I, I watched the person write my name on it. And you thought that was a good idea? 
I had no reason to believe that. So was... basically the pharmacist thought that was suspicious and yeah. he called the yeah. officers. Okay. And um, your husband had nothing to do with this? You're saying he didn't have anything to do with this, but he knew what was going on? He knew though. what was going on and I asked him to come with me. And then he was, where was he at in all of this? Exactly that. He, he didn't exactly know. To, I take care of the finances in the home and I wanted to make this debt go away. And um, so he's probably, probably in shock. Has he ever been to a jail facility before? God, no, no. It's an absurd idea. I can't, the idea of seeing him in this place is... Okay. What's your first name? David. Oh, David. Real quick, I just got done talking to your wife and I just need to know your side of the story, what happened tonight. I heard that you guys have never been to jail before. You've never been to jail before? Not okay. Once. Okay, cool. So what, what happened tonight then? We sat there, or we gave him the prescription, uh, and just sat there and waited, and the cops showed up. We had a lot of things to cover, and it just seemed like, you know, it, from what these guys told us, it seemed like it would be just you no know, big deal if you got caught. We've never done anything horrible in our lives. So as far as I know, that's, like, I, I don't know, because it's like she handles everything as far as the money goes. And since I've been laid off of work, I've been finding out, you know, how bad we are. And so when she came to me with this idea, was, we have no other option right now. So we just... But you don't have family or anything that can help you guys out, or...? We've kind of exhausted those possibilities as far as family that can help us out. Yeah. Hard times for a lot of people right now. Yeah. Absolutely, but better choices, though. Yeah, Because right now both of you guys being in jail doesn't help out, especially your babies. Um, that's all I could think about when, when they put me in the handcuffs. And mm -hmm. At least they weren't around to see it, right? Yeah. All right, just back where you were, sir. It's very rare that you actually have people that come in and feel remorse and honestly didn't want to be here, just made bad choices. He even thanked me for he arresting He thanked him. you? Yeah. So sweet. I put both of them up, and then they were actually both really compliant, and they're not like the typical criminals where they you know, lie about their yeah. ID and stuff like that. Yeah, but you're right about being first-timers, though. Yeah, the attitude's totally different. But they thanked you. Yeah, no, they both thanked me, so... <laughs> no, you were really nice. Ones, so. Okay, great. All right, so tell me the story tonight, from the beginning. They took you out of the car. And you did have things on you. What did you have on you? I had marijuana. How much marijuana? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have to say at least an ounce. Is that what you do? Do you, do you sell? No. Then? Because, I mean, I just, I saw it. Yeah, it was a very impressive uh, load you had. Yeah. So, but, and this, is that what you do for a living, or do you have a job, too? No. I was only doing it because um, I was in the middle process of getting my medical marijuana license and I was learning, so this was my plan, I was learning how to manicure it and groom it and treat it and baby it and To it. eventually sell it for yeah. the purpose of and medical. as of right now when it budded, that's when my license, my DMV contacts me for my license. It cost me $500 to get my license. Well, my own mech, I sent up to prison, I got three kids to feed, I can't find a damn job. And mm -hmm. That's the only reason when why you I got it. It's you know, the good people stuff, that's though. using it to use it for the paint or whatever, I mean, you take a hit off of it and it's immediately, it's pretty expensive. And what do you got to do to go through to be approved to sell it? I got all the information written on my paper right there in my wallet. You got to call the number. You have to see a doctor. You have to have medical injuries. Um, then once you go down and you see the doctor and he approves it and he sees your medical, then you go down to the health department, you pay $150 to get a background check, then the DMV contacts you and then when bam, 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 you get it. It's, it's really easy. Is there, does that have anything to do with if you have a history too, like a history? This is probably going to destroy my license. Okay. All right. Do you have a history, a criminal history? Just petty traffic. traffic. That's it? Not, really? Yeah. Okay. You didn't grow all that. You did all that? Do pretty good. Yeah, those are done from clones. Those aren't done from seeds. Okay, so. So you have to go to school and learn this stuff. You have to go to distributors. And that's what you've been doing. Yeah. All right, let me see how your paperwork's going and get you through. All right, thank you. Okay, you can go back to your seat. Thank you. It's just ridiculous. But she's doing what she thinks she needs to do to feed her kids and help her back and hard times. After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. 
Another night in the streets, another night in this hell. I've been kicking the trip and the cops is threw me in jail. And my fingers are ink, they got my head on the lights. Dear Lord, please get me out this jail tonight. Give me out, just give me out. We deal with all kinds of inmates in the county jail here in, in uh, Clark County. Very nice people sometimes get arrested and make mistakes, but generally speaking, we're dealing with people who are in here for a very good purpose and they've done something very wrong and they know it and uh, we know it. So it's a different atmosphere to know that you're walking into a room with about between 50 and 100 known criminals that uh, possibly could want to hurt you. We got one highly intoxicated male. I need your hand on that one. Can you help me out? No problem, man. Come on. All right. Let's go do this. All right. What do I do, man? Open up your hand. Relax your hand right now. Relax your hand. What? You're balling your hand up into a fist. I don't need well, that. I ain't smoking no, no dog. No, then just an aggressive stance. We don't need that inside the gym. We'll try the ring finger on the left hand. I'm a pretty boy, man. Remember? No, I don't. You remember me, blue eyes? I don't remember you. Yeah, you remember me from last time. Did you get it? Right, you remember me from, from last time. I really I don't. You're you. not that memorable. Yeah, you are. No, you're really not that memorable. What do I do, man? Don't even Wait. take a body. Hey, Sarge, we're going to take Vito out of here. Don't try Will you stop balling up your fist right now? I work at Ready Ice, man. Stop I it. want to show you my muscles, man. OK, well, don't. Okay, 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 okay. I, I won't do that no more. I, no. I promise. No, I promise. Done. Face the wall. I will. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You understand? You're I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right now, I want you to I'm be sorry. quiet. Shut your mouth. I'm be so quiet. Yes, sir. Come on in. Yes, sir. Sit in that corner right yes, there. Yes, sir. Stay nice and quiet. Please don't bother, don't bother anybody. anybody. Please don't bother anybody. As I started to take him out of the pre-arrest area where he balled up his fist, started to flex his muscles, showing me how strong he was. That's why we put him into a wrist lock to bring him down here into this cell. We're gonna... All right, we're gonna go down and take care of a quick situation in Z8. What are you threatening, man? Told you it was my house, man. Everybody back. Everybody back. Hey, come on. Get up! Turn around and face Get your hands in! Put your hands behind your back! Cut the tension in the body. There's no tension. You're gonna walk or we need to put you in a chair. Take all the toilet paper out of here. Stand up. Come backwards. Ow! Oh, my hand! Why are you throwing all the toilet paper? I wasn't throwing anything up. Freeze my ass off! That's it! Lay down on the bunk. What's your name? Oh, John. Hey, Lay down on the bunk. Yes, sir. You made down there and ate. They were causing a disturbance. They were taking toilet paper, wadding it up, throwing it on the ceiling. come in here, they were complaining about it being cold. You can see they were throwing the toilet paper up here at the vent to try to stop the air circulation. So that was the original complaint uh, from the officer, the reason why we came in here to, to talk to him, and that's when the confrontation took place. Hey, John, we just want to talk to you for a few minutes, OK? Get your side of the story and what was going on and, and what happened in the cell. It was cold as you know. nice up in that room. We, you know, we kept telling him over and over. And, uh, you know, then finally the, the one officer gave us a bag so we could uh, block the band. And uh, they wouldn't stay because the welds and whatnot. Oh, okay. And then that was, that was pretty much so it. So how are you doing now? You doing okay now? You seem pretty mellow. I'm all, yeah, that's how I am all the time. And it's not like anybody, you know, gave me any reason to, to even act that way to begin with. All right, we got to go. We got to fight. We got a 416, which is a fight, which often happens around chow time into a, into a module. Thank you.
Faces should be in the bunk. Oh, 1064, we have the nurse responding. And basically what happened was this guy and the guy in there got into an argument at the table. He went to swing on this guy and hit the old fella inadvertently across the face, going to swing at this guy. Okay. So he was an innocent party and just took the brunt of it. He's going to be going off to a disciplinary housing. It's important to keep control in these type of situations whenever there's a fight or whenever there's any kind of issue inside of a module like this. This is dangerous, man. You got kids in here, man. They yeah. don't care. They don't care. You know, I got a good job, a wife, and a home. You know, two nice cars. You know, it just I got caught up in some promotional things, and and you know, this is what happens. Man. I'm embarrassed, but this here is crazy. I'm, I'm terrified of this stuff. You know. And then I get hit for nothing. I mean, I could have been hurt. I mean, really well, you did bad. get hurt, but yeah, I did lucky. get hurt. But I'm lucky, you know. I mean, I never been I never been in a fight in my life, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're okay. Yeah. The nurse has a little bit of medication for you, pain for your nose. Pain, Let us know if you turn around. Unfortunately. We weren't able to stop it, but at least we were able to stop it before it went too far and before anything else happened. Tarrant County Jail is 13 stories high. Even though we are on the 12th floor, they really don't mean anything because they'll run a line down or run a weapon up or anything like that. And that's why we check the wires, check the doors, check everything that's going around. Uh, one of the things that, that pretty much keep me going, I ask myself, if I was locked up in here and wanted to get out, what would I do? How would I do it? Because a lot of times I'll check something that I probably would do and they've already done it. Well, you got an inmate that wants to walk around in tight uniforms enticing the male inmates. And due to his sexual nature, uh, I can understand that, you know, he wants to play the whole role, but we can't let him go around and do that. He's going to have to trade, change uniforms. All right, so let's see what we can do. Pretty much upset a lot of inmates up there due to the fact that he want to continue to wear his skin-tight uniform, and a couple of them don't like the idea that he keeps getting them racked down for his conduct. So somebody's probably going to try to hurt him. Uh, he's going to change, OK? Uh, due to the fact that his uniform that he got on is too tight, it's nothing against him, but we just cannot have him parading around here with, with skin-tight pants on. OK, so we'll be back. We'll be back. All right, we may have to transfer him out and put him in a single cell that's somewhere by himself. That's what he wants. Well, that's, that's what it's always been, all right? All right, go ahead and have a seat. All right. You can say what you want to say, it's not working. So y'all, 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 whatever it is you want to do. I've been, I've, been here this, I've been here this whole time. I've been the same way. All right, now I need you to work with me. I'm on handle it out there. That's my job, is to deal with my staff, OK? Okay, but this I, is what I need you to do. Okay, did you, okay, did you meet me for a second? I mean, I just want to stop you before you keep going. I'm not complaining. They don't have to give me another uniform. I'm going to keep my... I feel like they're trying to turn me into something. I'm, you know I'm, what? I'm a punk or whatever they have. As she say, I'm a punk, and that's what I'm going to say. Your sexual orientation has nothing I'm, to do with what, what okay, we're dealing with right okay, here. Then, okay, then, mm -hmm. it, evidently, you're trying to make me put on something. Baby, let me tell you something. When them uniforms were designed, they were designed because people were sagging. They got tired of people sagging and all the rest of that kind of stuff, so they came up with the solution of jumpers. They figured they gave you jumpers, there was no sagging. Now, they never not a one time said anything about a uniform not fitting you properly. Mine fit me properly. But I still want to Will you change the uniform? I still yeah. So right. but I'm, you're not gonna put me on no big old baggy okay. uniform. Okay. Now. My my point my point is tell me what's wrong with this. 
Am I it's too tight. Am I bought the one the uniforms? It's too tight. Uh, y'all don't want to fit. Do y'all Come on, want, man. You got the dudes running around. Look, let's, wait, let's, let's keep it let's real, man. You got these dudes running around say, here, man. You can't hold me responsible for what a grown man. And I'm not. Men do. All right. Grown men should already know what they do. Besides that. They act like men. Okay, man. Work with me. What is this? That's, big, this that's one side law and what you got. But see, this one ain't got all the lashes, so that's just like putting on the three X and all the four right. X. Look how big this is. Hold on. Now I'm going to make an example of, of, get this. Give me that uniform you got on. Well, now I want him to see extra big this is right here. Now this is no one extra size. Big. Oh, but it's still, it's like telling me, even even with this uniform on, look at this. I will talk and I will tell every damn thing <laughs> in their face. <laughs> Oh, come look, on, yeah, look, this man, way. look at him. This, this is a size big. Man, you're not going to the prom, how, man. How look, this thing is working, man. Give me give me that other uniform for me right quick. But come on. But the, come, work with me, man. Please, look, I'm asking you, man. I'm asking you. Okay, but look. I'll this, never work this long with nobody trying to get no uniform. I'm serious. But, I am very, very, very patient is, with you. You know, e you know, even if you call your crew over here, I'm, I'm not going to go through all I'm that. I'm still going to take it to where I want to take okay. it. Okay, give me this uniform back and give me that one switch out. And I still have my own. have a clean one. This is too big. I'm going to have a clean one. One. Baby, I still want y'all to go ahead and punish me for not, for, punish not, for, for, for not change. I mean, for, for not changing uniform. Okay, moving you for your safety. And a few dudes down there hollering and going on and acting crazy. Kind of concerned about that. All right. It wasn't about. It wasn't about. It was that just love. Just get attention. Somebody who want to say something. Well, well down, I mean, I don't. I don't care about getting moved. That's that's not. That's not. That's for your safety. Okay. Oh, oh okay. I understand. You something else, man. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> boy, you something else, boy. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, around this way. Nah, you can change in there. Step in there. The uniform's too big. Step in there with the uniform. Put his shoes on. It's a whole point in there. Take him down in the holding cell over there and put him in there. We have medical do a visual on him. Uh, just basically being moved from the pod for a safety. He's even the way it's supposed to be in the council been brought in before I even been touched. Medical personnel come in. The whole thing started over. You want to wear skin tight yeah. uniforms enticing the other inmates. And that has caused a problem. This, this is not his first rodeo. And it's not the last time. And, um, you know, he's, he's going to do it again. But the main thing is, like I said, is safety. Hopefully, we can put him someplace where you're not worried about enticing other folks. the Multnomah County Jail. We're located right in the heart of the city. People say here in Portland you have uh, seasonal depression because we get a lot of rain. So uh, you see a lot of intoxicated people. And once you've dealt with it long enough, in order to keep yourself sane to a certain degree, you kind of laugh about it. We received a call a little while ago from a Portland officer saying that they had someone they were bringing into custody that was causing lots of problems. What's his name? He's got a few warrants. He uh, told us that if he had a gun, he'd shoot us. He's pretty drunk. Okay. He's on the right side. He's been kicking and spitting in the back of the car. Don't drag me out, please. John, are you going to cooperate? Please don't drag me out. John, we don't want to drag you out of the car if you'll cooperate. My legs don't work that good. I can't move. Can I get out of this side? That side? That's fine, John. Step out. Okay. I already busted my head open. Okay, well, we got a nurse that'll take a look at you. Okay, we just want you to listen to our simple directions, John, okay? Okay, we're, we'll do that. We'll do that. Come over here so we can search you. Face the counter. Do you normally carry needles? No, I don't do that. Okay, well, we gotta ask you. Uh, hey, John, are you suicidal? Are you diabetic? All right, wanna take your handcuffs up? All right, so let's read your feet for him, please. Yes. Sir, yes. John, let's read your feet. There I you can't go. spam that far now. Not please, this. please don't. Yeah, I'm not, we're not. We're just, we're just watching you spread your feet, that's all. No, no, please, please, please. John, John. My, my, my John. legs. No, please. John, spread your legs. Don't, no, please. Spread your feet. Don't spam that far, dude. I have to. I have to search you, okay, John? I have to spread them that far so I can please, search you. Please, please, please. Don't spam that far. Hi, John. Stay searching. Hand on the counter. Put up. 
put up bend beneath where you go. I'm going to pass out, dude. I am. I'm trying to give you an option so you can get through the process. Alright, dog. Wait, sit down there. Sit down. Sit down. Come. Sit down. There you go. Alright. That was easy. Alright. So basically, we put him in a, an isolation cell. He came in, he's very intoxicated. They picked him up for drinking in public. Uh, he had some warrants for his arrest. I think they also charged him with something else. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, just in order to, to keep it safe down here for us, we put him in isolation cell. Tom, why are you banging? Uh, they probably, well, so, so, okay, uh, no, we don't need to talk to him for a while, so, obviously we made a good choice, he's gonna chill out in the side room, you step right over here, yeah, right, face the counter, move your feet apart, face the counter, have you been drinking tonight, energy drink, you been on any drugs? Put your hand on the counter. Nope. Am I going to have to stay here or what? Well, it just depends on you don't have stable housing. I got to go to work tonight. Okay. Take all your jackets off. Place them up on the counter. Well, your face is awfully red. You sure you ain't taking any drugs? No. None at all? I've been working double shifts. Oh, Is that your paycheck? Yeah, he broke my string on my coat. Man. Well, he couldn't get the knot undone. Because the, the string yeah, in your you coat. You're destroying my property uh, now. Listen. No, that's messed up. Bro. I'm going to explain it to you. No, okay? that's messed up. No. No, it's not messed up. It's yeah, policy. It yeah, you guys destroyed my property. Man. Uh, nobody destroyed anything. Yeah, you did. It's broken. The sheriff says we got to take all loose strings out of clothing. Cautionary measure. We don't want you to hurt yourself or anybody else. Keep, no, you guys. Grab your stuff. Have a seat. It, you guys Taking you guys to court. That's fine. Timothy here is a little upset. He thinks we've uh, ruined some of his property by taking his shoelaces out and some of the loose strings in the jacket. That's our policy. If the string isn't tied in, say like the other on the waist or at the bottom of the jacket, it's taken out for safety. Where'd you find them? They ran across the street in front of me where my light was green. So you're a contractor food, for food, the food service? Food for, yes, and you cook there. These two are brothers. They're both warrants? Yes. Both warrants? They work at one of our jails. Both of you work at the at Wapato in the food service area? Do they have county ID with them? Let's take a look in their wallets and see. What are you doing with this? Coke? What are you doing with this? Coke? I was searching his back area and I just kind of popped right out of his waistband. Close it up. It's not nothing? Is it fake crack? How much did you pay for that? How much is it? How do you know it's not real? So I tasted it. I'll go back and test it. I want to be able to report to the commander who's in charge of the food service so that we can pull their access gotcha. completely. I mean, the warrants are one thing, but possession yeah. would be another. Thanks. Don't get any easier than that, I guess. No. Apparently, the two gentlemen are uh, contractors that provide uh, the food service for the jail. Deputy Hochtefer was searching him. Inside his waistband was a little baggy. It appears to be pottery substance, probably cocaine. The inmate says that it was, uh, he actually tasted it and tested it. it was, said it was fake, but they're going to do a test on it anyways to be sure. If it is cocaine, they're going to uh, notify commands. So they'll probably be terminated if that's the case. So you might want to start making some notes to yourself because I just got word that on a possession, okay. the dope that you found in his pocket uh, came up hot for opiates, so it's probably coke. Excellent. It's probably going to go to grand jury. They're charging them with a PCS2 because they're going to restrict their access to the kitchens there at Wapato. Nice. Two brothers get stopped for jaywalking and end up getting charged with possession. What kind of luck is that? Good job. After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. 
Another night in the streets, another night in this hell. I've been kicking and tripping, the cops just threw me in jail. Got my fingers in ink, they got my head under lights. Dear Lord, please get me out of this jail tonight. <laughs> just get me out, just get me out. I've been with the county since 2009. I work here as a sergeant in the intake unit. Basically what we deal with is the uh, incoming and outgoing of everybody. So we get to see them when they come in and we see them when they leave. For the most part, we get through the process. At the end of the day, all that matters is that we get home safe, nobody gets hurt. Okay, just relax. Okay, if you trying to talk to me, okay. talk to me with these motherfuckers up. You ain't got none on, bitch. Okay, here's what I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> I don't give a what you tell me. As long as you sit here hollering like that. I don't give a what you I, tell I'm me. I'm not gonna have them take, take those cuffs off. Take these motherfuckers off me. They're not coming off with your attitude like that. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You're gonna stay just like you are. So you calm down just, just a little bit. And then guess what, bitch? I got a day to have these motherfuckers off. And when they come off, Bitch, you gonna have a day too. Okay. No, no, don't try to be no. nice, girl. No, you want to walk around? Yeah. <laughs> and you. Oh. Negative. Move her. Yep. Take her patty. Just spit her. Yeah. I'm trying to spit on you. I'm about to spit it, so. Spit my leg. I'll let you know we have a zero tolerance. For that kind of attitude and behavior, we're not having that. Somebody give her commands, let her know what you're doing. Take off your pants. Try to be in this hot, smoking. Here's the lady. Ma'am, if you continue to resist these officers, kicking your legs, fighting them, you will be tased. Do you understand me? Based on your behavior, you're going to be in this padded cell for some time. Part of that process means you're not going to have any of your clothing and you're going to be given this smock to wear instead. No, that's great, man. Tell me about her. What's her story? Uh, so we were uh, dispatched to a disturbance. It was basically two family members that were arguing. Immediately after making contact, we can smell the uh, alcohol on her breath. We then allow her to call a ride to try and give her a chance to go home instead of the other alternative. Uh, come to jail, especially since her family member did not want her on the property and she doesn't have a residence there. But she refused to leave. Uh, at that time, we determined to take her to jail for a PI. Um, she locked up, uh, started resisting arrest. We just uh, assisted her to the ground so where we can better control her movement. She was kicking and she was locked up her arms. Uh, we were able to get her uh, detained in the back seat. Then we transfer and then we transported her to the jail here. So she's gonna be charged with public intoxication and resistant arrest. Okay. She's now in the padded cell. If you have any other questions, we can send somebody around to ask her. But she's gonna be in there for a little while, cooling off. Let's go ahead and walk this way. Straight, you're gonna make a left here. Are you married, single, separated, divorced, or widow? Married. Any children? Three. You have a job? Yes. What's your occupation? RN. OK. Is that fine this way? Let me see both of your hands. This is just oil and water, OK? Rub that together similar to lotion. Try to get it all over. It makes it easy and it dries faster. How long have you been a nurse? Seven years. And this is not going to, these charges not going to affect that? It should. I should not think it's beat it. You are? That's good. I'm not here to keep you in jail. I'm just here to process you so you can go home. 
you're still cooperating with us, we're good. We'll get you in the blue uniform. We'll get you out of the uh, smock and move you out of that padded cell. All right, let's go this way. Just walk this way, make a left. All right, I'm gonna go over here and use the phone. Okay, so now that that's done, just hang on to this, have a seat in that chair right in front of this window. What made you come in here so angry tonight? I'm just curious. I wasn't here, I didn't get the side of it, but I'm hearing it, so I wanna come and ask you your side of the story. Well, I got into it with my brother at my sister's house. My sister invited me to her house to babysit for her. It's okay. her birthday weekend. Okay. My brother's there. Me and my brother get into it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a car. I have a car, so. So does he live there? Did he, uh, he no. just showed up? Yeah, he just came today. The officer's asked would I leave. I didn't, I wasn't gonna leave because I was the babysitter. Right. And I guess, <laughs> that was the resistance bar. I don't know. So who called the police? You called the police or he called the police? I called the police. You called the police yes. and then you got arrested for the resisting NPI? The yes. Okay. I'm disgusted with the situation. Yeah, I could definitely understand that. Well, at least it's a good thing that we were able to get you processed a little bit faster. I appreciate it. Well, I do want to say thank you for once we came on shift, we didn't have to deal with that. You were very cooperative. So thank you for that. I do appreciate it, okay? Thank you. All right. Tanisha will be able to go through the booking process now that the alcohol was on off. Just the fact that she was able to talk with me um, speeds up the process to get her on our way home. Do I think alcohol played a role in it? I do. All of this could have been prevented had that not been a factor. Maybe she'll make better decisions next time. female in the dark hair at the end on the bench. Uh, I'm gonna walk her to medical. These guys in here are pretty busy, so I'll try to help them out. I'm out walking. Look. This way. So what are you in here for? Possession. Felony possession charges, you said? Three of them. Two from February, one from 17 days ago. What were they for? Like, possession. I know possession, but... Oh, heroin and cocaine. I understand that, but while oh, you were out of jail, oh, you bonded out. I bonded out. And then you jumped on. I jumped on. And how'd you end up in Johnson County? I had a tail light out, and I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And so they pulled me over, and just they pulled me over. I mean, yeah. they searched the car. Found out you had these felony heroin, warrants. Yeah. Found some heroin in the car? Found new heroin, yeah. A fresh charge in Johnson County? Fresh charge in Johnson yeah. County. So how'd you get out of there? Tarrant County came and got me on the bench warrant. Oh, okay, so you're here on so the bench warrant. So when I'm out of here, I'll go, you go back, back to Johnson, Johnson County. County. And then back here for my other yep. felonies. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you here in a minute. They're going to take a picture. What's your date of birth? January 19th. Married or single? Single. And do you have any children or dependents? I have a child. Okay, go ahead and step back and rest for me. Mm -hmm. So, you got caught with heroin. You use heroin? Every day. How old are you? 28. 28. That's prescription pain bills before that, so they got too expensive. Yeah. When was the last time you used? Um, 17 days ago when I got picked up on my first felony warrants. Um, I had a good $200 day habit just to do dope. It's too much. You gotta get off of that. I'm a mess. Um, I've lost my house. I sleep behind dumpsters when I can. I don't know when I'm gonna eat my next meal, but I make sure I get high every day. Um, I'm in jail. Actually, when I got picked up, I was kind of grateful. I had somewhere to sleep, I had somewhere to eat. I knew I wasn't gonna be raped or anything else. Um, like I am on the streets. I have a great support system, but they've all kind of just walked away from me. I don't blame them. I've screwed them all over. They bought me out and jump on. I mean, I can't stay off a needle. Don't think you can ever get that back? I've been to rehab twice this year. I'm going to try and get it back. I mean, I had a very normal life until I found heroin, and I just kind of numbed everything, made everything okay. So tell me about the ink on your hands. Got it done in county. What's the meaning of your tattoo? I have OG on my thumbs, my daughter's initials. Mm -hmm. On purpose, we named her OG. She's an original yeah. gangster. How old's your daughter? She's three. Where's she at? With my ex-husband's parents. 
Is that a safe place? Yes. That's good. Oh, great. Oh, great. But she needs a mom. Yeah. Her dad's facing life in prison, and now her mom's just a junkie. Mm -hmm. She didn't deserve that. She didn't make that choice. So you want to get out of here and be back with her? Absolutely. Okay. It's been a downward spiral the last year, yeah. obviously. <laughs> it's my second time locked up this year, and every time I get out, I just go right back to the needle. It's insanity. Yep. And I do it every day, over and over. There's a stopping point somewhere before I die. <laughs> All right, Dana, I'm going to put you in a holdover. You have an opportunity to make a free phone call in here. I think Dana knows where she needs to be and can probably make the right choices. It's just uh, it's too many temptations when she gets out of jail and the people she's hanging out with. So she's making some poor choices every time she gets out. But I know she thinks about her daughter, so she has a chance. She just needs some help from others on the outside. Born and raised here in Amarillo. Worked here with the Randall County Sheriff's Office. A uh, bunch of men and women here that I really enjoy. A lot of them are like family. Oops. Looks like we've got APD in Randall County coming in with one. We'll go see what they got going on. Uh, did you go in through that bay door that was open or did you go in through one of the actual doors? So what was going on today that it took two of you? I don't know what type of assault it was, but they had an assault charge earlier around 45th and Washington. He got away from us earlier. He'd run to the backyard, but then mom came out saying that he'd got back in the car with a girlfriend and she had left. And we ended up finding her, but he wasn't in the car. She denied that he ever got in the car. We think mom lied to us to get us to leave there, allow him to get away. He made it down to Miller Paper, just south of uh, 58th and Washington, and jumped through one of their bay doors when one of the trucks pulled off. Still a couple of Gatorades, shirt, sweet and low, some Mexican cheese. Oh, and a fruit cup in his underwear. Fruit of the looms, baby. Fruit of the looms. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, we'll see you, man. Be good. Mason, if you'll take your shoes off, step there in that doorway for me. You'll walk straight down this red line here for me, all the way down there, the last door on your left. We're gonna let Mason chill out in the cool off cell for a little while. Midnight shift will take over and they'll finish him up. Get him booked in. You ready to go, man? All right, if you walk all the way around this counter to the, to the other side. If you'll stand on that red line for me. Okay. You got fired from work today? No. Or you've been fired? Yeah, I've been And you just went back? Yeah. OK. Went Why'd you back. go back? It was just familiar. You just wanted a place to? To use the phone and stuff, yeah. Hide out, really, huh? Yeah. The general manager of the company see me at camera and called, the, called in, I guess. So you, you took some food? I knew there was Gatorade underneath the desk. So I went and took two Gatorades. Okay. And on the way out, I remember there was a fridge. So I grabbed a fruit cup and Took some sweet and looks. We didn't have sugar at the house. Hey, why, why not make a little little grocery stuff, huh? Right. So they nabbed you for that too? Yeah. Okay. Regularly have a building, I'm guessing. Yeah. All right, if you walk all the way over here, I'll take your fingerprints real quick. So why'd you take off from your mother's in the first place? Cops shut up. Huh? Cops shut up. Well, I know that, but you just run every time you. Nah. I still want to go to jail today. I know you had the you had the two two warrants, but they're just tickets, right? You got yourself in a lot more trouble than two tickets. By the end of the day, yeah. It's, it's a long day. How'd y'all first get pulled over? We never really got pulled over. My mom called the cops while I was there, so my girlfriend stayed in the car because we have the three kids in the car. And then when the cops showed up, I ran to the car and then ran back. Right. Ran away from the car. I faked him out, so they weren't around there at the time, and I ran back to the car and told her, you can go, you can go, go home. So now I'm on foot and she's in the car. Right. On the way to the house, they stopped and pulled, got her. 
Okay, okay. And she had there. warrants, right? Yeah. So what happened to the kids? They're with her mother-in-law. Are they y'all's kids together? Yeah. You ain't married her yet? No, I mean, it's to me and her we are, but... Well, hopefully she'll get out after a few days and be able to get the kids back up. She, huh? should, she should get out in four or five days. Yeah. You might be waiting a little longer. Yeah. For some damn Gatorade. Off for the Gatorade. All right, man, just have a seat for a second. It sounds like he just kept digging deeper and deeper in his hole. Um, he probably wouldn't have ended up here. I don't, I don't know if they would have brought him in on the two tickets, but at the least he would have been out in the morning, but just uh, kept digging and he'll definitely be here overnight at least. I'm working the evening shift, which is the 3 to 11 shift. I really like what I do here, and I've always liked uh, serving the community. And I work with a lot of good people. What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Good. Good, good to see you. How's it going? Good. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, good, good. Good How to are see you? you. I'm all right. Hey, <laughs> sir. How are you? Hey, sir. Yes, sir. You can get something to eat or it's too late. Can you get something to eat? Uh, the kitchen may be closed. We may have to see if the nurse has anything. Ralph. We, can we get some plates or something? I think the kitchen closed. You think closed, the kitchen already gone? Yeah. Oh, well, you might be the I missed out. I sandwich. I have to ask and see. Go down there and get Pat down. Take, turn right here and face this way. You all right? Yeah. I'm fine, sir. What I'm being charged with? I guess you were listening yet. Were well, y'all not had a sign begging for money or something? No, uh, no. What you was doing? Walking on the roadway. In the middle of the road? Yeah, man. Well, I was hitchhiking. Oh, you was hitchhiking. Where are you trying to get to? Yeah. Get where? Yeah. I was over there chasing his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so your girlfriend left New Orleans and you've been trying to catch up yeah. with her? Did you catch her? No. So what I'm being charged with? I tell you, so listening. So uh, listen, what the hell is that? Ask him for I'm money? A, yeah. Mm. Were you doing that? No. I was sitting there minding my own business. I thought you was walking in the road. I was. What's the final charge? So listening, that's the final charge. But you don't think you was doing nothing wrong? No, I don't think so. Think you'll be able to bond out? I ain't got no money. How much money out there? I'm gonna count it right in front of you. Right. Ain't got enough for a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee? You got more than enough for a cup of coffee. Six dollars. Take five, huh? Enough for a cup of coffee, like you said. Officer Barry, I was wondering, uh, the, the fellow you brought in a little bit earlier, Ralph, what you pick him up for? The panhandle. And he was soliciting. He was um, hanging on the corner. Actually, I still have a sign here. I was doing a report for it. Traveling hungry. <laughs> and one. City owner says you can't panhandle in Beaumont, so we had to take him in. Uh -huh. Nice guy, though, but yeah. sorry. He's a little bit confused. He seems to think that um, he was hitchhiking and uh, he was in the roadway, but he, he was in the roadway, but he had a sign in the middle of the roadway. He didn't seem to think that that was illegal. He came in before. Pretty much for the same thing. All right, okay, we appreciate it. All right, Sarge. You working anywhere? Huh? Are you working anywhere? Uh, now. Yeah, well, I was working on the street down there. That was not working, Ralph. That was soliciting. Is that it? That's the full final charge. Yes. Soliciting, sir. You cannot be on the street doing oh, yeah. that. You can if you got a license. I got to talk to the mayor about that. How much is it, anyway? I don't know. I work here. I was trying to make some money to get a license so I can solicit. Make some money so you can solicit. <laughs> it's just a... Okay. <laughs> Give this to the officers behind the desk so you can make a phone call. Come on, let's go and make your phone call. Well, I don't have a phone. I don't have a phone. You don't have anybody you want to call? No. Okay, then. They'll finish telling you what your charges are. You gonna put me back in there? Yeah, because I don't want you to hurt nobody, you know. <laughs> don't hurt nobody. I couldn't hurt a fly. You're charged with soliciting from the roadway. It's a $150 bond out of the city of Beaumont. Now, I got out. enough for a pack of coffee anyway, huh? Oh, well. Come on, bro. Come on, sit down here until we get a move card for you, all right? 
All right, thank you. He doesn't have enough money to be able to bond out, so Ralph's gonna stay with us at least until Monday. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. Um, I actually joined the military in 2000. Um, that's how I ended up in Texas. I got stationed at Fort Hood, found the opportunity to become a detention officer for the first time in 2004. I found what I was looking for. I found a sense of belonging to something greater than myself, and that's important to me. Officer Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, you're coming with me. So I had Castaños move somebody earlier on a disciplinary. Um, Go ahead and tell him what he told you. When we were coming to J Block, he told me he wanted to talk to me about some contraband that we might find on the tent. Uh, apparently, they have some Xanax, they have some drugs, they have, they have red man tobacco. So we're going to move everybody to a day room. Those two inmates that we already identified, uh, we're going to do a full strip search on them. Everybody else, we're just going to pat them down, send them to the rec yard. Once everybody's out, we're going we're gonna to search the, the block. So we're going we're gonna to hit those two specific bunks and see what we get. Sir. Ready? All right, let's go. Five twenty-nine to the ten. Could you be, meet me at your door, please? What's going on, brother man? Word, word. No, it was you. Gentlemen, go ahead and go into the day room, please. Day room, gentlemen, everybody to the day room. Wake up. Yeah, I gotta do a search, brother. Gotta do a search. Y'all messing up. We're clear on the bunk area. Right here, brother man. No tobacco. Step outside. Get you some fresh air. You smell like tobacco right here. Oh. It smell like tobacco. Yeah. It was tobacco. Got another, another glove. This one might have something. Talento, can I borrow your scissors real quick? Might be lucky. Yep, tobacco. Tobacco? Right, sir. And whose bunk is it? 48. That's the admin porter, correct? Right, son. Go ahead and pull him in. There you go. They will usually bring it in on their prison pocket. That's how we call them here. We got more dices. It's gambling. We're not, we don't allow inmates to do any gambling. We just found tobacco in your tub. Yes, sir. Okay. And the reason we decided to come in today was because we heard that you had tobacco. Yes, sir. Someone had brought it in and we decided to. He sold it. Left, he yeah. sold it to you. Yeah. He What'd you give him for it? It's a couple of soups. A couple of soups. Yes, How long ago was that? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being honest. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You know what's gonna happen from here, right? Yes, sir. So we'll go from there, okay? Yes, sir. You just found more? Ah, tobacco. So you never seen this right here? Yes, okay. It's fresh too. And where was that? Uh, toilet area. Hernandez found it. So I guess our information was correct. We got dices, we got staples so far, paper clips, tobacco, cigarettes, no clippers. And no clippers. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. And this and is all this sign. is all off the same same email. Same out of five. Okay. These are trustees. That's why we can trust them. I have a little tobacco there. They used to make the cigarettes with. This was found on the same inmate with the rest of this stuff here. It was wrapped up in the tip of a glove. That's probably how he smuggled it in. Ain't no telling where that has been. Now, the tobacco itself is not only a facility rule violation, it can actually lead to criminal charges. Uh, Texas state law will allow us to charge them because although tobacco in and of itself is not illegal, it is a prohibited substance in our facility because of our policies. Whether or not I actually charge him with that, it's up to him. If he decides to be cooperative with me, I can work with him. We can keep it internal. If he decides not to, then we can find other ways to for corrective action. We're continuing to search. We'll see what else comes up. So far, so good. So here's the deal. There's some stuff that I'm going to want to discuss in private with you. Um, some stuff that I want you to clarify. I know you did You did fest that it is yours, which I appreciate. Most people try to lie their way out of it, so I appreciate your honesty, OK, right off the bat. Um, you are going to get, you're going to have to move. I'm pretty sure you saw that coming. Um, you are going to get reclassified. However, because you were honest with me from the get-go, I'm not going to rack you. I'm not going to stick you in max. I'm not going to rack you up. Um, but I am going to have to take your, 
your job status, unfortunately. Having the tobacco weed here is not only a rule violation, we can actually charge you with it. But it's outlawed by our policy, which makes it prohibited substance, congressional facility, felony three. You don't need that crap. OK, so we'll talk in private. What happens from there is going to depend on you. OK, you'll be the DJ. I'll dance to whatever song you want to play. OK, we'll take care of it. So this gentleman here was the one that we found all the contraband on during uh, today's search. He's going to no longer be a working inmate after today, and we'll see what he has to say tomorrow. They're heading back in now. The officer that was watching them will go in and re-enter the tent and resume normal jail operations. Uh, we're done for tonight with this block. Let's see what else we can get into. What I'm doing now is that I'm ensuring that the inmates are classified correctly. Determining someone's classification, we take their rap sheet into consideration, which is their previous convictions, their current charge, things of that nature. That's part of my responsibilities as the classification officer. Mr. Dale? Yes, sir. How many people do we have ready for housing right now? Uh, there's a few we're working on. Um, we've, we've still got a few. We've got to get into medically assessed. Uh, there's one we're about to pull right now. He's I don't know. He's been a little uncooperative since he got here the other day, so. Let's go ahead and get him medically assessed first. If you have any issues with him, let me know. Will do. All right, thanks, sir. All right, no problem. Now, part of the process for getting them housed, we have to get them medically assessed. Um, we have to get them classified, get them showered, get them booked. Oh, yeah, just saying, if you'd have just gone to medical, no, I done what you were going to do. for some shoes. OK. That's all I did was ask for some shoes. Get, take your clothes off. Take your clothes off. Oh, you don't all know. I asked for was some shoes. Take your clothes off. Well, let go of him. Take them off. You need to quit trying to manage. Take them off. All I asked for was some shoes. You said you ain't got any. I don't follow them out there. Take them off. Lying mother. <clears throat> all I did was ask for some shoes. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> he pulled away from me. He <laughs> did. Down he went? Yeah. Just now? Just now. Where were you? <laughs> I was hoping you'd zap him. Call me. You're good. What, was he in a holding cell or was he out of Yeah, he was in a holding cell, and we they needed to move him for whatever reason. Uh, I think it was to go see medical, and he refused to go see medical. Went to grab his arm and lead him out, and he jerked away and kind of kind of halfway swung, you know? Active resistance. So um, he went to the, the wall. Camera, and, it happened, so it happened inside the whole yes, cell? Yes, in, inside the, the camera? Cell. Yeah. yeah. I'll, pull the, I'll pull the video for you guys. I'm willing to bet we haven't heard the last of him tonight. OK, I got the footage pulled up of your incident. OK. Talk me through it, man. What's going on? Well, so he refused to go and see the, uh, the nursing staff to get medically assessed. and. Um, he had been here for 48 hours, and you know, by policy, if, we, if they refuse to do that, we have to put him in VC and assume that they might be a suicide risk. This is the initial contact we had. Gave him the option to come out. He didn't want to, and then this, oh. that's when he decided to pull away. He almost hit me when he did it, so that's when we had to get hands on and yeah, he, he, forcefully He pulled away him. from you. Finally got him into the cell, and once we got him in there, he was a little bit more cooperative. And All right. Good job, brother. Were you under the influence when you came in? No. You weren't drinking? No? Every time that we tried to talk to you on Monday, it was F off. Yeah, I understand that. I was pissed off. I'm yeah. here for something I know I didn't do. That's probably why you didn't go see the judge, and that's probably why you didn't get a sit down with pre-trial, man. So you, you, you got to chill out, man. But you know, I want this stuff just like y'all want it, man. Get you I'm booked in. Whatever, man. I just okay. want to block in a mattress, man. And you and me never had a problem, man. I know I didn't do it. What you're saying, I've done, man. It's words to the wise, man. Whenever we tell you to do something, if... I've got no problem with that, man. It's just how you gonna say it, man. Okay, well, if we're telling you to do something and you're not doing it, and then we, we go to get you and help you to do what we're telling you to do... I understand, man. You know? I know I haven't been right either, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna go... I, and I do apologize, sir. She's gonna go ahead and clean you up. When we get back to book, and you gotta go back in that same cell, or can I put you somewhere else where you can... You put me somewhere else, man. Okay. Hold this up against your ass. Did you work in oil field? Oh, yeah. I have a lot. What did you do in oil field? 
not just about everything. I mean, like, about rest about about glory, talking in service, you name it, I've done it. All right, man. Come on out here for me. We're going to get your fingerprinted, get your mugshot and everything taken care of, get your phone call. Go and have a seat right there, but they're ready for you. The second there. Second one, Second sword right there. So you're going to be cool from now on? Yeah. You understand what's going on? Yeah, I apologize for yes, what I Okay, I appreciate that. So I went over your classification. What bumped you for minimum is the fact that it's a felony three, not a state jail felony. Uh, theft by repetition. You're being accused of taking two Kawasaki hedge trimmers totaling $1,600. Yeah, theft less than $1,500, two or more previous convictions. Okay. That, that, that was the kicker. That's what bumped it from a state jail to a felony three. Well, that's, that's no way, man. There's no way two hedge trimmers would cost 1600 bucks, man. They're lucky if they cost 200 but the most. That's what you're accused of, man. All uh, right. Where you got to house me at? Uh, J Block. And that's like where? But it's, it's a dorm setting just similar to the tent. All right, brother, man. So we'll get you out there here shortly, all right? All right. Thanks, Lord. Oh, she said I could get another ice pack if I needed one. We'll get you one. Tarrant County, we take pride in uh, make sure our jail is one of the cleanest jails in the state. The officers make sure that we have trustees that we employ. We'll always stay painted, cleaning. We'll wipe down flat surfaces. We look for dust. We look for everything. We don't let anything go unnoticed. Uh, we want the environment to be as clean as possible for our officers. Hey, Connor, what, what's going on with you? Um, just, I missed court the other day. So yeah. Kinda... What what they uh, what they tell you in court? Uh, I hadn't actually got to go to court yet. I just. Showed up to court for today, and they yeah. kind of took me back there and told me I need to come to jail. What charge you got? What happened? Man, me and my ex-girlfriend we just kind of got in an argument, mm -hmm. and I just bought her a phone like the day before, and we broke up. So I went to her house. Right, right, right. And basically took the phone. To go get I, the phone back, right? Took right. the phone that I bought her, and that makes me. You know, criminal. <laughs> did you have to go into her? Did you go into her house or to go get the phone? Yes, sir. Did she get mad or her parents got mad or what? Uh, yes, sir. Her parents. And, yeah, they all got mad. I mean, everything's cool now with them. That's, they don't have no hard feelings or nothing. Everything seems to be fine with them. But she's kind of the judge now. Not the typical inmate that we normally get being 18. So. But he's got a new CID number, so we know. Right. So he's fresh in here. Yeah, you can really tell that uh, this is a new process for him. This is not a, really an environment that he's used to. A lot of these experienced inmates, these convicts, will, will pick up on the fresh ones, the ones that have never been here before. And even here in the booking process before they get housed, it's easy for the younger ones to get manipulated uh, and to do things that they wouldn't normally do. So that's why we walk around with the younger ones. Let's make sure they get from process to process on booking. We'll talk to you later. We got a situation going on over here. I'm telling him to take off all the stuff, put it in the bag. He's refusing to listen to me. He says, I ain't doing this goddamn and That's not no, what I said. No, where's the property That's bag. exactly not what I said. He slams me on the ground. He takes me over there first. And he's like, well, you want to learn a lesson? You want to learn a lesson? And I was like, I'm really not trying to learn nothing. He's like, well, you're going to learn a goddamn lesson today. And he slammed my head up against that wall right there, threw me on the ground, put me in handcuffs, and walked me out there. I swear to God. Honest story, put it on my life. All right, yeah. stand up, turn around. Back down, turn, put your clothes on. Talk to it's her. really not a threat, but I'm not in the free world, dude. I swear to God, the way you just slammed my head, ain't a threat or nothing, but I will say something. Put your underwear in that bag, too, Connor. Mm -hmm. Tell me again what he did. When I was uh, dressing him out, I told him to take all, off all of his clothes, put them in the bag. I told him to go ahead, put the boots in the bag first. He told me at that point, I'll do how I goddamn well want to do it. At that time, I went to take the boots, put them into the bag, and he started to bow up on me. Yeah. So I turned around, I pushed him off onto the For wall. For your safety and everything. Yeah. Told him to stay on the wall until I could get some Any additional other inmates help. back there? Anybody there was one there? more inmate that back there. I told him to stay on the wall. And then that dude just kept yeah. turning around. He got into it with a couple of inmates down there. They were calling him pretty boy, and yeah. one called him a lawyer. Right, so right. he was already a little bit aggressive. That's just part of him being new in jail and not knowing how to deal with the situation. So we'll just let's see how he handles it upstairs, and we'll go from there. So. All right. All right, man. Thanks. Keep your back on the wall right here. Okay. 
What happened downstairs? I understand you were a little agitated. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you calmed down now? Yes, sir. You understand we have rules? Yeah. And whatever that officer tells you to do, you need to stick to it. If somebody yes, says sir. put your hands on the wall, you keep your hands on the wall and you don't move. We are going to move you to the other side, but you're going to be okay while you're here. You're going to follow yeah. all these rules. I don't know how long you plan on being here. Do you? I'm going to get out of here pretty quick no as soon as I can. Okay. All right. You ready to go back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if he's in a pod with 70 other inmates, so there's a lot of different situations that could happen. And as if we can correct his attitude, his personality now, maybe they can keep him out of trouble. It seems like he may end up having to learn the hard way with his attitude, but... Uh, he's a little young, a little naive. Yeah, he's yeah. got a lot to learn, so this is, a, this is a new place for him. It is. He might be on the right path, hopefully. I think he will. down here to Texas about 23 years ago. It's a big state. It's a perfect climate for riding motorcycles, lots of sporting events, going to Rangers games. Uh, probably plan on staying here for quite a while. So, Rebecca, what are you uh, here for today? Uh, theft. From theft 100 to 700. What, uh, what, what makes you want to take something? Or are you claiming you didn't take something? Because I got caught up in the wrong crowd and got mixed up in the world of drugs and dancing with the devil. It's just a terrible, terrible path to go down. I'm trying to get out of, but... Tell, tell me a little bit about the theft. What was it? What was the deal there? Um, I was trying to help my boyfriend get out of a situation he was in. Huge mistake. I was taking something to pay off a debt for him to get him out of trouble. And When's the last time you were in jail? Um, about six months ago. What was that for? Probation violation. Or what yeah. charge? Theft? Theft. All right, Rebecca, we're going to go get your picture taken now. You said this is the second theft. Yeah. Do you use any drugs? I do. I smoke meth. You smoke meth? Um, How long have you been doing that? Not even a year. No. No, and I got out of it. I quit. I was clean when I got out of jail the first time. And then I was trying to help him. He shoots it. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to help him, which made me fall back, relapse, right. well, back into it, which I was people. stupid for thinking yeah. that I could help him. But well, We're going to get your uh, picture taken. Let's stand right here on this wall for me. So your boyfriend, how long have you been with him? Um, I've known him for probably about three years, but Since I've been, been with Texas? him. Yeah. Yeah, never been in trouble a day in my life. Yeah. Never until I moved to Texas and got caught up in drugs. Never even Bad been stuff. in trouble for a speeding ticket. The drugs make you do stupid things, you know? It turned me into someone I don't even know who I am. Like, my mom doesn't even know who I am. I don't know how long you'll be here, whether to revoke your probation, but for the time here, you have a few days of being clean. Yeah, definitely. I already feel better being off of it. That's good. Ms. Flores here will uh, take care of you and do your ID part here. Okay, thank you. Yep. Rebecca is going to see the judge this, this morning. Um, she's wanted by another county. So let me go talk to her, see what's going on. Rebecca. Over here. How you been? I've been OK. I've been doing better. What are you down here in booking again for? Because my Dallas bondsman went off my bond, I guess, because I got arrested, and that's a violation. Mm -hmm. So he went off my bond, so I guess i got to get re-rained on it. It's a theft charge. Actually, I'm out on bond in Palo Pinto, too. Oh. But Any chance of them go off that one, too? I don't know. What's that charge? That's a possession. Possession. One to four. Tomorrow's my release date. Right. For here. And then I got 10 days, I guess, to wait for Dallas to come get yep. me. It's OK, because I want to be done with it. Not come back? My mom's already got me set up for rehab and Abilene and everything. So That's excellent. After I get done with all this, I'll be going to rehab, yeah. which I need. That's I good. It'll help me. My mom always says, there's only one thing you need to change if you want to get off drugs. Mm. And that's everything. Yeah. She's probably right. Moms usually are. Well, good luck to you, Rebecca. Rebecca seems to uh, have the right state of mind. She's a little better today than she was the first time we talked to her. Uh, she's got some other charges in other counties she wants to deal with. And it sounds like she's got some family out there that wants to help her. So, you know, hopefully she takes the right path and doesn't come back in here when she gets all this taken care of.
and the doors open up and they leave me outside. I'm gonna go home to my family tonight. I've been thinking about my home, I've been thinking about my needs. I don't wanna.